Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Richard Burke. I'm executive director of the Western Liberty Network. Western Liberty Network exists to build farm teams, farm teams of local nonpartisan office holders, farm teams of lobbyists and of skilled citizen volunteers capable of helping the campaigns they care about, whether they be candidate campaigns or ballot measure campaigns. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about how to get out the vote using personal efforts uh, rather than uh, organized efforts, although I'll talk briefly about those. And we'll also provide you with some resources that you can use on your own, on your own time, to cover various topics. What I'm going to do, first of all, is share the screen of the Western Liberty Network website. Okay, uh, you should see it now. This is the Western Liberty Network website. When you type westernlibertynetwork.org <clears throat> or westernliberty.com, you will come to this website. This is our homepage. And as you probably know from evidence by the fact that you're here, uh, we have a periodic Saturday training and you log on by zooming here. Scroll down a little more and you'll find a variety of resources. Uh, this is a conference we held in February and uh, alongside, you will see some of the breakout session PowerPoint presentations that were provided by trainers on various topics. Uh, scroll down more and you'll see even more resources. Lots of good stuff here. A guide for nonpartisan office holders. Um, also, various speeches and presentations uh, such as these on how to use social media to support the candidates you care about. Uh, speeches from people like Dennis Linthicum, uh, state senator and others. Uh, just a lot of really good resources here you can use to gain some general knowledge, keep up to date on what's going on with Western Liberty Network, and participate on what it is we're doing. And if you go to the training tab by clicking here, you'll see even more resources you can use. A little discussion up top, talking about the kind of training Western Liberty Network provides. A series of companion training documents. Each of these documents, some of which I'll share today, are designed to be provided with a live training session, but they stand on their own. So if you see some topics here that are of interest to you, uh, you can just click on it, like a running a voter registration booth. Click on that, you'll get one of these training sheets that you can sign on to. Okay, I got a text here from S Stephen, pronounced Stephen. Okay, got it. And my microphone is down. I don't know why you can't hear me. So we have problems with microphones today. Well, that's okay. Uh, Sherry Cyber, Cybler is coming in. And if you are having trouble with your microphone, you can communicate through the chat box. Okay. So uh, welcome to Sherry. We're just going over right now some of the resources that are available to you by going to the westernlibertynetwork.org website and going to the training page. Uh, these are the documents that you can uh, look at if you like uh, one in particular, running efficient and effective meetings, click on that and you'll get a sheet you can view or download. Or if you go down to the bottom, you can download a single PDF containing all of Western Liberty Network's training documents. So you don't have to pick through them all. Going down to the next session are these recorded Saturday trainers. We've got about two and a half years worth of these I provide a lot of these trainings myself, but we do have a number of guest trainers that come on that are expert in their field. And you can click on all of these and it'll go right to a YouTube video. And some of them have links like this where um, sheets that are related to the video, you can download them. So that's all very good. And if you like what you see today and would like to help Western Liberty Network continue what it's doing, you can go to the support page. And here you can provide a one-time or recurring monthly contribution to Western Liberty Network, which is always tax deductible. Uh, I also would like to take a moment to discuss uh, one of our co-sponsors and an affiliate of Western Liberty Network, Parents' Rights in Education. They also have some training facilities, um, but if you go to parentsrightsineducation.com, you will go to this page where you can establish your own account and have access to the Citizens Training Center. Uh, Parents' Rights in Education is the leading organization in the Midwest, or excuse me, the Northwest, to uh, um, provide uh, parents with resources that help them assert their rights 
uh, with respect to the schools that they have children in, or even teach them about alternatives to government education. So um, those are the resources we have available for you. Uh, I need to point out that Western Liberty Network is a 501c3 organization. And as such, uh, we are barred from um, supporting any partisan candidate or opposing any partisan candidate political party. And we also do not take positions on legislation or ballot measures. Uh, what we do is specifically what we do is specifically train uh, limited government grassroots activists in how to do politics successfully. And then of course, um, they are free to use this training in any way they like. So with that, um, we're gonna welcome Betty Milliman here. And you came in uh, just in time to miss the preliminaries and start the training, which is what we're going to do now. I like to do these interactively. So if you have something you wanna say, or you have a question, Go ahead and chime in. If your microphone works, feel free to use that. Um, or if your microphone is having trouble, uh, you can use the chat window to do that. I'm going to send some documents to you that you can use. And uh, one of these is going to be on uh, getting out the vote, which I'll discuss today. One of these is going to be on how to canvas your neighborhood. And another one is going to be a worksheet you can use to track people you are trying to get to vote. And you can keep track of them all. So you should have these three documents in your chat site. I don't think the third one came in. So I'll reattach that. Okay, that is now on the way here. Okay, so go to your chat window and at your convenience, you'll be able to download these three documents. Okay, getting out the vote is particularly important in this cycle if you support limited government. Polling has showed that a lot of the constituencies that typically uh, vote for uh, proponents of big government are switching their tune this year. Uh, that includes students, that includes uh, Latinos and a number of other groups. It is such a shift that most people on the left who do voter registration drives have stopped, have told people to stop registering voters for fear that they register supporters of limited government activists. So it's important to get everyone to vote. And uh, this is not gonna be a persuasion election. This is likely going to be a base election, meaning the winner is gonna be uh, those people who can get their base, their bases of support out to vote in high numbers. So nothing is really more important than getting out the vote. That's true everywhere, all year round. But if you're in Oregon, as I think most of these folks are, um, um, it's particularly important now because the primary election is on May 21st and ballots have to be mailed by May 21st for them to be counted. And of course, Oregon, like an increasing number of states, for better or worse, has a mail-in ballot system. So it's important to chase them. Now, uh, I would first like to begin by briefly mentioning traditional get out the vote efforts. Um, these are often conducted by political parties and by candidate campaigns or ballot measure campaigns. If you are interested in doing so, you can contact your county or state political party, ask them what they're doing for get out the vote and um, at volunteering to help. They may be doing telephone banks where they call voters who have not yet voted and encourage them to vote. Um, <clears throat> it's really important that uh, these people be contacted and there told is a very charming their, town their square is. just I'll tell a few you blocks away from the hotel that has some darling shops. Very shortly. Um, and also they may have door knocking campaigns where they have literature that you can hand out. Those are very good uh, to be involved with. A lot of people don't like it, which is why we have personal get out the vote um, initiatives, such as those I'll be teaching you about shortly. But if you are not averse to working in a, a call bank situation or knocking on doors, that is certainly something that's very important to do. 
Um, if you do not like doing that kind of work and or if those kind of get out the vote efforts are not um, available to you, then I encourage you to do an individual get out the vote program. I'm going to uh, bring up the document that I sent you in just a moment. I'm going to share the screen again. Um, when you download the document I've sent you, this is what you will get. Uh, you don't need to do it right now. If you just want to follow along, you can and then download it later. But this is what you will get. This is the instruction sheet on how to do a personal get out the vote campaign from wherever you are. You can do it at home, at your desk or kitchen table, um, whatever you like. Now, <clears throat> a couple of things to know is that a 2012 Stanford University study found that people become more, much more likely to vote in an election if one, they see <clears throat> voting as part of their personal identity, and two, if they have a specific plan as to when and where they will vote. If they have those two things, they are 72% more likely to vote. So in any pitch that you come up with, um, just say something like this. Uh, hi, Bob, if you've got a friend, Bob. Hi, Bob, you've been a, a conservative most of your life, right? Got another person coming in. Bob, you've been a, a conservative for most of your life, right? And they'll say, well, yeah, you know, for 20 years or whatever it is. This one statement is enough to tie their political affiliation, you know, to their personal identity. And so you get them to acknowledge that these values are important to them. You can say it in any number of ways. You can say, um, you know, Bob, you and I, we agree on most things uh, politically, right? And that uh, this is important to who we are. And if they agree, again, you succeeded in linking their political identity to their personal identity. It's very similar to religion. If you are a, you know, if you are a Christian, Muslim, Jew, uh, Wiccan, or anything else, a lot of people take their faith and it's connected to who they are. So if you've connected the act of voting or their political identity to who they are, you're halfway there. Then when you talk to them, you want to say, you know, um, I think this is an important election. I think it is really important that we vote. Do you agree? And they probably will agree. Um, if they don't agree, you can have that discussion. But if they probably, but if they agree, you've tied their political identity to their personal identity. You've gotten them to acknowledge that the act of voting is important. <clears throat> and then you just ask them, you say, um, well, when, when do you plan to mail in your ballot? When do you plan to vote? And they'll think about it for a second. But if you get something as simple as, uh, well, my wife and I, we were going to vote next Tuesday night while eating dinner, filling out our ballots. That's a plan. That is enough of a plan. So, you know, simply say, uh, hi, um, you know, oh, we've got another person coming in. That's great. So just say, you know, hi, Bob. Um, I'm sorry to bother you. You have a minute? Sure. Okay, great. The reason why I'm calling is because we've got this election coming up. I know you've been uh, conservative for years and years. And uh, this is, you know, part of who you are, just like me, right? And they'll say, yeah, okay, there's a link. But we've got this election come up, and I think it's really important to vote. Don't you think so? Yes. And they'll say, okay, great. Um, I'm going to be sending in my ballot tonight. When are you going to be sending yours? Get them to think about it and have them come up with a plan, any plan. Uh, I guess I'll get my wife to together and we'll vote next Wednesday night. Okay, that's a plan. Okay, then you're there. Uh, the question is then, who do you ask? Okay, uh, if you're like a lot of people, you don't like to call folks you don't know. You don't like to bother them. I like to say that, remember, you're not asking these people for money and you're not asking them for any time other than the time they spend talking to you. This is a self-governing constitutional republic and it doesn't work unless we govern ourselves. And all you are asking people to do when you ask them to vote is to exercise their franchise, to use their political power by submitting their ballot. So you are offering them a chance to empower themselves, 
and leverage their political power. So you're doing them a favor and you're doing the country a favor and you're engaging in an action that is necessary for the health of our constitution republic. <laughs> so I encourage people not to be shy about asking people to vote, even if you don't know them. But if you don't like talking to people you don't know and you're just not up to that, that is why I say the personal get out the vote program involves you calling the people that you know. Call your friends, call your neighbors, call family members, you know, call people that you do business with, people that you're comfortable talking to. Just contact them, even if it's just a dozen people. Those were a dozen people that were not contacted before. And if you get just a few people to do this, pretty soon you've got a decent block of votes. If you have a dozen, two dozen people from three or four uh, folks trying to get people to vote in some neighborhood elections and small elections, that can be the determinant of who wins. In larger elections where the margins are very close, that little bit can be what tips the balance. That's why it is very important for you not to think that your efforts are futile and small. They're very important. So sit down one night <clears throat> and write down the names of everybody that you know that will be eligible to participate in the election that you care about. Just write them down, put their phone numbers down, put their email addresses down, make a list. It'll take a little time to make that list, but just make the list first. You know, don't randomly just start doing it without a list because you'll forget people. So, uh, you know, make the list. As you're going through it and as you're working through the list, you'll think of other people and add those to the list. That, that way you're going to work efficiently and you're going to be able to cover all of the bases that you're actually able to cover. So this Get Out the Vote program is not uh, about you um, going to a call center and calling people at random. It's not about you knocking on doors of people you don't know. This is about you talking to people you're already comfortable with, not asking them for money, not asking them to help you move or do anything like that. You are offering them a reminder that they have a chance to exercise their political power. And so it is very important that uh, you be confident in your approach. Once you start to contact them, um, you know, just remember in each case, you know, find a way to attach the act of voting to their identity, find a way to get them to agree it's important to vote and then have them come up with a plan to vote. Um, third thing, once you've got your list and once you've started working through it is to prepare your messaging. Now, uh, in most cases, what I've provided you with is adequate to do your messaging. Okay, just once again, say, uh, you know, Mary, it's good to talk to you. It's been a while. Uh, the reason why I'm calling you is because this election is coming up. And I know that you're a good limited government proponent and uh, that, um, you know, I'm confident that the act of voting is, is important to that. Uh, yes, she'll say if you know her. Uh, and uh, you've got the identity link, then say, you know, the election's coming up May 21st or whatever your election is, if you're not in Oregon, and uh, she'll acknowledge that. Now you know she's aware. Ask her when she plans to vote, what her plan is, and then you've got it. That's generally all of the messaging you need. Now, if you have a particular candidate that you're supporting, or if there's a particular ballot measure that you're supporting, um, you can ask if they would be willing to talk about that. Um, if they are willing to talk about that, you can, you know, go on and continue to discuss. Or if they say, no, I really don't have time or, you know, I, I agree with what you say about this, but I don't agree with your candidate. That's fine. Let them go. Uh, you've, you've done your job. You've done your job of mobilizing them to vote and go on. Um, discussions are fine, but don't get dragged into a discussion more than about five minutes. The reason why is because it's important for you to cover the territory that you need to cover. If it looks like you're going to get into a big discussion, uh, say, you know, Mary, um, you know, I can see this as a real discussion. It sounds like a lot of fun. I'd really like to do this with you, but I've got a bunch of phone calls to make tonight. Would it be okay if we met for coffee next Tuesday and we continued this? Uh, if they're reasonable people, they'll say, oh, sure, sure. I understand completely. And you can make that that date and you can have that longer discussion, but you need to get them off the phone within about five minutes, preferably less, 
so that you can go through all of the people that you know. Now, if there's only a dozen people and you've got three weeks to the election, you know, you can take a little more time. Just gauge it the way you want to. But, um, you know, time is valuable. And so if you're doing something and can do it successfully in a shorter amount of time, it's better than doing it in a longer amount of time. Then you've got more time uh, to volunteer in other ways or uh, simply spend with your family or do a hobby or whatever you need to do. So, uh, uh, but be efficient. Um, I have a worksheet I'm going to show you. I've already sent this to you. I'll send this. Some people have come on uh, just recently. So I'm going to send these documents again. Canvassing your neighborhood, getting out the vote, and the getting out the vote form, which I'm going to bring up and show you now. Okay, I'm going to share the screen again. Okay. One of the documents that I've sent you is this form right here. And what this offers you is a standardized form to use when coming up with a list of people you want to contact. Uh, rather than making your list with a blank sheet of paper, I encourage you to print out a bunch of these. You know, print out about 10 of these sheets. Each one of these facilitates two voters. You've got your contact name. If you want to, you can ask if they're registered to vote whether they need help. Some people might have Parkinson's and need assistance, whether they plan to vote, whether they already voted, whether they've received their ballot and when will they vote, their phone number, their email, their address, uh, if needed. Um, so, you know, I could call, uh, I could write down Mary Smith and I've got her phone number and I've got her email if I need it. And then the second one, you know, Joe Blow, phone number and email. You know, you can use this to make your list. You can use 10 of these sheets. Then when you're actually making phone calls, you can just work off of this list. Um, you know, you probably don't need to worry about if they're registered to vote, if you know them to be politically active. Uh, but if you're not sure, you can ask them if they are registered to vote, um, whether they plan to vote. You know, you can work this into your own way of talking. Uh, you don't need to ask all of these questions, um, but you can if you think it's important. Um, you know, the approach that I provided uh, earlier is usually adequate, but if, you know, you you feel it's necessary to ask these questions, just make it your own. Just do it your way in the way that you feel comfortable. That's the point of this personal get out the vote program is to make sure that people are able to contact folks they already feel comfortable with using language that no one can be offended by or that they can be contacted with. Um, so you're going to uh, write down when you contact these people. In a lot of counties, you can find out whether or not somebody has actually voted. You can't tell how they're voting, but you can tell if they've submitted a ballot. And so if a week goes by and they're still on the no vote list, you can call them back and say, hey, I'm calling to remind you. And, you know, oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, I'll do it tonight. I'll write that down. Call them back. And if they get annoyed with you calling back, just say, look, uh, I'll stop calling as soon as you vote um, because you promised to vote uh, or whatever thing feels comfortable uh, for you. There is space on each of these sheets where you can make notes about the calls that you make and you can just work off these sheets. So uh, that provides a nice little tool for you. Uh, I don't see any questions on chat. Again, if you have questions while I'm going through all of this, feel free to kick in with your microphone or if your microphone's not working, uh, use the chat box. Okay. Another thing you can do, if you don't like working phone calls but you don't mind knocking on doors, is simply canvas your neighborhood. If you happen to be a precinct committee person, you already know about this or should. If you're not a precinct committee person, there is nothing wrong with going around and organizing your neighborhood. I'm going to bring this up really quick. That sheet looks a little bit different and looks like this. This is what you'll see. Canvassing your neighborhood. Okay. Um, you can download that from the chat window if you want. 
Uh, you can also pull it down from the training tab of the westernlibertynetwork.org website, or when this the, when the recording of this training is posted, um, where it is posted, you'll also be able to uh, uh, download. But anyway, there are some things you need to know about canvassing. If you're willing to knock on doors yourself, it can be a personal effort. Um, it is not soliciting. You'll know that there are some. You'll notice that there are some places, uh, apartment buildings, and some HOAs where there's a sign up saying no soliciting. Um, encouraging people to vote is by law not soliciting. This has been taken to court, and the document that I've sent you has um, court citations of the cases where it was ruled by the United States Supreme Court that soliciting is a First Amendment right. It becomes soliciting if you start asking for money or if you start asking for something of value beyond the time of engaging with the voter. Um, but just going around, uh, you know, exercising your First Amendment right, encouraging people to exercise their franchise is by law not soliciting. Um, trespassing is another matter. Uh, if you see a no trespassing sign, you need to stay away. Um, the exception is if it is an apartment building or a gated community or an HOA, they cannot tell you not to trespass for the purpose of um, doing get out the vote canvassing. If it's an individual home, then you have to stay away. But HOAs, gated communities, and apartment complexes do not have the right to keep you off property if all you are doing is encouraging people to vote. That is a protected First Amendment right. Um, so you can knock on the door and you can say, hi, my name is Richard Burke. I wanted to uh, come and let you know that there's an election happening. The uh, election day is May 21st. You should have a ballot uh, in the mail or you'll be getting one very shortly. And I just wanted to encourage you to vote. And that's all. Do you have any questions? That's it. And uh, then go on to the next door. Again, don't get stuck on uh, long conversations, because that keeps you from covering territory. Uh, just uh, go to the next door. If they want to talk with you, you know, you're going to meet some really nice people. Um, you're going to meet some nice people. You might even find people that want to help or want to volunteer. But, uh, you know, don't get caught into a long conversation. Say, yes, I would love to work with you. Let me take down your phone number. I'll give you mine. And, uh, you know, we can meet next week and let's get, let's get, see if we can uh, work together on something. But right now I've got to cover a lot of doors. You, I'm sure you understand. And they will understand. So uh, don't get into long conversations. Just let them know that the election is coming. Let them know it's important that they vote. Ask if they have any questions and thank them and move on to the next door. This is, uh, if you have materials you want to hand out, if you're supporting a candidate or a ballot measure, it's perfectly fine for you to hand these materials to them. Uh, you can also leave them. Uh, wedge them into the door. Do not leave them in a mailbox because that is against the law. You can't leave anything and anything that is used as a mailbox unless you're a postal carrier delivering, you know, official postage um, or parcels or whatever. But uh, you can leave it under the welcome mat. You can wedge it into the screen door. A lot of things that you can do, but do not leave it um, in the mailbox. <clears throat> so. Um, you know, a person, an individual person can come up with a really good and effective get out the vote program by simply contacting people they already know, people they're already comfortable with. If they want to combine that with a canvassing effort, such as the one I've described and such as the one that's discussed in the training document that I've sent you, um, there's a multiplier effect. Uh, one other thing is if you do go out knocking on doors, Bring somebody with you. Make sure you do that and follow the instructions that are in the uh, uh, training document. And if you get a few other people to duplicate your efforts, you know, by running their own personal get out the vote programs, particularly in small elections, these efforts, modest as they are, can be absolutely decisive. And in close elections, they can be what tilts the balance a few hundred votes. Uh, I don't know the states that everybody here is from, but in Oregon, there are a lot of legislative races that were decided by 40 votes, 34 votes. One was decided by seven votes. And, you know, one more personal get out the vote, you know, activist would have been enough. 
to tilt some of those races. And, and uh, the one where it's like 400 votes, probably need a little more than that. But uh, the point is it counts. So as election day approaches, you know, particularly in the month before the election, like in Oregon right now, come together with this plan, read this training, use these resources and get out there and, and make a difference. And um, unless I have any questions, that is my training for the day. Uh, does anyone have yeah. any questions or comments they would like to share? I am currently looking at the meeting chat form and uh, for Betty, Sherry, and someone on the iPhone, I don't know if your microphones work. Uh, Summers and S Stevens microphones don't work. If you have any questions, go ahead and chime in. Okay, I don't see any questions. So uh, keep a watch on the westernlibertynetwork.org website for future Saturday training sessions on different topics. We'll be particularly active now uh, through the Oregon primary and then uh, we'll uh, retrench and do some other topics for the primaries of Washington and other states. Uh, so, and also if, if you are active and have not already done so, I would like to encourage um, all of you to consider running for a local nonpartisan office the next time they come around. In Oregon, it'll be in uh, May of, or March, the filing deadline is March of 2025 and the uh, election will be in May. In other states, your deadlines will vary, but I encourage everyone to uh, participate in, in their self-governance by running for and serving in local nonpartisan office. So uh, um, Summer has asked me if I'm available for a brief call after the meeting. The answer is yes. And that is all I have for you. So thank you for uh, participating. This will be posted on our training page very shortly. And God bless you all. Take care.